Rosie Perez. Today, Raven Simone and comedian Eliza Schlesinger hit the co-host chairs. It all starts now. because we're, hello, it's welcome to the beer. We are making huge announcement today. We're kicking something special off. We are happy to announce yes. that Raven Simone is now permanently. Girls. Right. Didn't come back for the next Cheetah Girls. Came right. back again. Came with you and Broadway. Yes. And I'm very happy to be sitting with these smart, talented mentors. And I brought you gifts. Ah. Let's see. Oh, my. Oh, sneaky. Oh, Nicole, you get chocolate. Oh, thank you. She loves chocolate. I don't like normal presents. I like presents that you would normally not yes. think. Yes. Um, I heard that you love bacon. I don't work here, and I get a gift. This is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. You gotta start somewhere, right? I'll start right here. Tres leches. Tres leches, my Tres favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And potato chips and watermelon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You get this. You need. You need a fork. Mm -mm. No, of course not. <laughs> um, you guys, let's have some fun. All right. Yeah. celebrating right now, and that is LeBron James, who scored 40 points last night to lead the Cavs to game three victory over the Warriors. Did you guys watch? I watched. I, I, I watched at the theater. Mm -hmm. I watched in the car, coming mm -hmm. from the theater to the after party for Jason Alexander, who blew it out. Congratulations, Jason right, Alexander. Right, right. You know, uh, Golden State came back from a 20-point deficit. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to nail it. And LeBron James not only used his muscles, but he used his court intelligence. Mm -hmm. He used his basketball intelligence. Mm -hmm. And he just, I mean, he just, he was really incredible. I was going to say, it, it, it felt to me like he decided he was going to win. Like, it oh. really did feel mental. And, yeah, I'm from the Bay Area. <clears throat> if Golden State wins, I'll be happy. But I love you, LeBron. When you're that good, is it even? <laughs> Is it even an effort? It looked like he was just doing layup practice. I mean, this is what I did for the game. Because, you know, I don't watch the game, but we did create a meme for it. So I want to put that up really fast. Did you uh -huh. think I wasn't going to lose, Corey? Did you think? Oh! Oh! Just so you know, but I don't watch the game. I only use the memes from different basketball players because they get the greatest face. Yes, that came from when he did a play that he just used his mm -hmm. court intelligence and he turned to Curry and he went... And I was like, wow, yeah. wow. Well, and you know, it ain't over till it's over. That's right. So there are more games to be played, I mean, and we shall see. Hurry and, we shall see. <laughs> and we want to get uh, into the latest on the maximum security prison break in New York. The investigation continues into whether or not the pr a prison worker played any part in their escape. Her son, however, was quick to speak out defending her. Take a look. When you're put in a situation where a family member's friend or other family members might be you know, friend or at risk, you do a lot of things that you wouldn't think to just protect your family. And in my family, family always comes first. Well, you know, I, I again, it's, this story is not going anywhere. It's kind of crazy. It's going to go on and on and on. But, you know. They've been lost. They've been gone for four days. They say this is the longest. Normally they're really fast with catching people, right? 
Well, if they know, you know, they always say the first 48. The police. The, the first 48. 48. Right, it's a TV show. Yeah, they, <laughs> yes, but they were gone. You know, yeah. they were gone in the first 48, and God only knows where they went. I hope they are up in the wilderness somewhere. Well, they said they were right behind us, actually. Well, it, no, it's... it's. <laughs> The people they're looking for are hardened criminals. They're convicted of. No one is saying that they they're innocent. She is innocent of, of everything. She's being investigated. Uh, She's sure, being questioned for uh, maybe providing them with the tools. But we with you know, power not, tools, right? How else would they have gotten power tools in? I mean, that's that's a lot of muscle control. Because <laughs> apparently <laughs> they are apparently they are uh, on good behavior. And that allows them to have access to, to power, power tools. tools. Right. So, okay. Which yeah. is just mind boggling when you right. think about it. Because if well, I had. You uh, dismembered somebody, because I, I go straight to power tool yeah. for that, right? And also, you know, know, let's give you know I think it's kind of freaky. But, okay. Did she have a. a, a, a she had an anxiety I, attack? I, she. she, a she she, she said that she had an anxiety attack, so she a told the police attack. that she was trying, yeah, she had a panic attack, she was going to help them, but then she turned herself and not turned herself, and then she admitted she had a panic attack, this she wasn't going to help them. Yeah, this is all speculation. All speculation. But until we, yeah, but you know, welcome. there's all kinds of stuff out there, but, but that's okay. Three milks. <laughs> so you already did it, but you're going to do it again. Yes, Yes, yeah. I will do it again. I would like to welcome a new cast member to our play, Larry David's Fish in the Dark, last night. Jason Alexander took the stage for the first time and turned it out. Turned it out. He was stupendous. We thought that he was going to have the, you know, first night jitters. Nothing. This no. man is a pro. Yeah, I knows. mean, he had us laughing. It, it's hard for me to yeah. break face. Yeah. And I'm telling Tell you. What that, what that means. Start. It means that you you break your character and you and the other Crack person uh, right. you start laughing right. and he had me he had me yeah, on the edge he's close. so good he's so good That's it's fine. a wonderful show Larry David ran backstage uh, during intermission and he was like oh a clump and so uh, yeah he was very happy well, congratulations Jason you know what else is making people for clumped <laughs> Zoe Saldana's husband decided to take her name when they got married and apparently. For some reason, people lost their minds about this. I, why do y'all care? I don't know. But people w were very freaked out. They were saying, you know, you know, men will get all messed up if they do. They won't be men. And what the hell? Why does, what's wrong with him taking her name? I, I don't know why it matters. I don't know why it matters. I don't know why, it care, uh, why anybody cares. I don't know why we insist on poking our nose in people's bedrooms. I think that's creepy. I think that if he wants to take it, first of all, she makes more money. So good for her. She Does gets she? to wear the pants. We know that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she makes more money. Well, I mean, he's an artist. He's an artist, and he could sell more paintings than she actually might get jobs throughout the year, so it could pan out evenly. I think it's awesome that he took her name because it just shows that he's not power hungry in a man sense. Like, sure. you have my name, I'm also the head of the household. They could be more of a progressive relationship to where everybody can share things. I mean, his name might sound better with Saldana, or she's like, listen, if I change my name, my my brand might change. Like, who knows? Brand, and I speak as someone with an incredibly difficult last name. I understand maybe his is a weird last name. I'm looking to get rid of Schlesinger any way I can. <laughs> any woman that wants to marry me. I know Zoe. Mm -hmm. She's a very lovely girl. Mm -hmm. She's a very 21st century girl mm -hmm. and very forward thinking. And her husband is just a wonderful man and, 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 is, and, and is all about empowering women and empowering just human beings. And I think that he probably took it just on that alone. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the fact if he makes less or more oh, money. It's a and, joke. And, yeah, but I'm just saying that. that I'm just saying it, it has not a lot of people you're joking about it but a lot of people are making that statement and it's not a fair statement yeah. he's a very I, progressive man I think man. before we I mean feminists we all want equal footing but wouldn't it be nice to have just like a leg up for a little bit before we get equal footing wouldn't that well, be nice I, I have to tell you you know I, everybody says they're feminists and feminists maybe he just saw it as something he wanted to do maybe he yeah. just thought it was a good idea nothing to do with feminism and empowerment good idea bad idea I have a question if the American people are voting on their phones, does that make her Simon Cowell? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a 
Listen, listen, it, it might make her president. I mean, listen, the, the greatest problem, and we've talked about this around this table a lot, is that your generation feels so out of touch and, and unable to sort of reach these politicians. If Carly's saying, text me, I want to hear from you, she's a lot more likely to hear from you and you. If, I, if that's that's right there. I respect the feedback of the YouTube comment section oh well, so much. I'm just saying, politicians, if as many people voted in your generation as watched American Idol, we might have different presidents. Well, your I feel so bad now. We're We're right. like, on the like, thing. Young People feel so it's sort of hours cut and out from cash. politics, and I think True. Carly's trying to say, "Give me instant feedback. I'm not going to just take a vote every four years. I want to know as I'm governing what you think." And if, I she, think it's if, she, if she texts me the entire bill and lets me know what's going to happen in layman's terms, yeah. not rhetoric that I don't understand either. Don't get me caught up. Prop eight, phrases. prop nine, whatever you're saying. Hashtag 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 on every part of that bill. I will vote. Literally, I will. I would. I would yeah. be a part of that movement. And would it change things to make it go faster? Would, I would think, policy I think, I think people informed. I think people would feel, you know, you have the idea of everyone, sh you shouldn't vote just because you have the right. You should vote because you're informed. Don't just get out there and check off a box. I, I, I think my generation needs to understand that as well. And, but what scares me is that nothing takes away validity from a statement than anonymity. And that's what, I can break that down with hashtags if, if my generation wants, but uh, that's what we're going to get with all these tweets, is just idiots sitting on their it's couches. There. It's there. Uh, yeah. If you text saying. me, I must be registered. It should be register, it's what it is. Or register me as soon as, e as soon as I get my license, this is what it is, and you have my information. Rosie? Just, you don't have my website to speak. Well, I, 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 the question is, is that, is she saying she wants to be an American Idol contestant because she wants to win like an American Idol contestant or she wants to send out information. She wants, the, she, wants the, she wants the she wants the feedback. dialogue. You know, that's that's fantastic, but she I agree with you. She has to get ready for the trolls, you know, and and it's a lot. Well, and but when trolls, you're a president, believe me. you got trolls. You got trolls up the yin yang. Right. It's also so, possible that she said the phrase American Idol so that young people would hear American Idol uh, and yes, associate that name I with her. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, but there's also adults who watch that show. I mean, you love so you think you can dance so you think you can vote like what's that? <laughs> you know I, I just think that whenever a politician is trying to take the best from entertainment and the best way to engage it's an engagement tool I applaud it I think it's great it's an effort maybe she should do a rap or some sort of meme <laughs> a meme battle possibly anyway <laughs> Nobel Prize winning scientist Sir Tim Hunt is obviously a brilliant man He's a Nobel Prize winner, right? Let's but do you have to? Have, but that doesn't mean you have brains, because this is what happened. There's a lot to learn about women. He says females should be banned from labs because they quote fall in love with colleagues and cry when criticized. He, he, I cry when I read stupid stuff. <laughs> I cry. <laughs> I'm crying now. What, what about Madame Curie? What would happen if, he, if your thought process worked and Madame, what, Madame Curie wouldn't be welcome in the left? What the hell, man? Stick to the, st stick to the stuff in the thing. He did apologize. <laughs> but he also called himself a chauvinist pig. I, I don't back uh, him up whatsoever, but he said he was a chauvinist He apologized yeah. with tears, and uh, we can all tweet him, and he can get that instant feedback. No, no, listen, listen I, I think this is what we are all battling against. And when someone says out loud with what, what I would guess some men maybe in that field are thinking, I think it's a good opportunity. It's a teachable moment, as sure. President Obama would say. But, you know, the notion that, that we still are sort of held hostage or tied down by these stereotypes that we're the ones that are going to fall in love, I think more men do the lusting in labs than women. I think women are working. Right. By and large, women are busy working. So. Also, to say that to say that women shouldn't be allowed in a workplace or a lab because they fall in love and they cry, by that extreme logic, then men shouldn't be allowed out of the house because they rape. Like, I'm saying if you're going to polarize it that way, then no one should be allowed to do anything. If you're going to take an extreme and marginalize people yeah. for everything they do, then no one should be allowed to do anything because we're taking the worst aspects of someone's personality and putting that on display. Well, well for stereotypes that. don't work. <laughs> yeah. Stereotypes, stereo male stereotypes, female stereotypes, none of that stereotyping doesn't work anymore. Grow up, dude. Anyway, you know how I feel about flying. <laughs> I'd rather walk. <laughs> and she does. And I do. I would rather walk to Europe than get on a plane. But here are two, yes, but here are two more reasons why I don't want to mess with the plans. The airline industry apparently wants to shrink the size of acceptable carry-on luggage by 40 percent. 40 percent. And they want to make the restrooms smaller. Smaller? How much? How could, how? 
Is you know, I guess we're all going to be standing up. Now, is, is this because they want to... Is this because they want to make economy a little bit bigger with better seats? I don't they gonna think it's up? altruistic like that. Okay, I think they want to make more money and, this and is, have more stuff. Yeah. Wouldn't it stand to reason that the food offered should also be 40% smaller? To what to food? Where are you flying? You got a box, you what, get you a got money or something? You got some money, you found flying. I'm just saying. Offered and there's less water offered, then the bathroom can be smaller because you're spending less time in it. <laughs> Just an endocrine joke. Well, it will decrease the number of Mile High Club members, so. I would think so. <laughs> you know. Or you we'll be seeing it more. Yeah, yeah. Which, personally, I don't want to do. I, because if you make the bathroom smaller, they have nowhere to do the Mile High business except in the back of the plane. Have you been oh. in an airplane bathroom? Like, there's no place now. I, I have a toddler, so I spend a lot of time in the airplane bathroom. Uh -huh. He likes it there. And Pound toddler in there. The diaper. I mean, there's no room now. I, I mean, the only people having sex in those bathrooms are really, really tiny people. I mean, really really <laughs> Here's, Here's my problem. What do they really expect us to do? When I get Charging, shortening right. the things. When I got here two months ago, I mm -hmm. brought three bags. It cost me six hundred dollars. Yeah. To to pack my bags underneath the plane. Now, how am I supposed to do that? Go to FedEx. That's yeah. going to be that's more expensive. Well, that's what that's people what are doing. doing. That's what I do. Yeah. I, I send everything. I send. The ticket price didn't fall. Why didn't that happen? You know, look. I have a bus, so I don't really care. But you know, I care about you. But we're going to go and come right back with more Hot Topics. Heartwarming or hell-raising? The new ad that's causing a million-dollar controversy. Next. that lets people track how much sex they're having. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is this something you want to share with Apple? I do. I mean, I'm not really sharing it with Apple. If they let me t put the name of the person I'm having sex with, if I used a condom, Maury's gonna be out of a job. <laughs> if anybody watches Maury, you're gonna know who your baby daddy is because you're gonna know when, <laughs> how, what happens. You're gonna know who you need to tell you contracted some type of uh, right. STD. What happens if you get hacked? Yeah, it's all going in the cloud. What if your mom finds out? You know, I was at the Apple store yesterday for two hours. It doesn't automatically go to the cloud. You, you could change the settings so the cloud doesn't know. We all understand the cloud. Yeah. We're, all, we're all thoroughly aware of how yeah. the cloud I works. Learned from no, I, no, I, I am. I am. Because I want to know where my stuff is going. Yes. And I want to know who has access to it. I want to know, know how easy it is to hack my cloud. It's so, really yeah. hard to find anything you in know? the cloud. I want to know hours. how much sex mm -hmm. the average person is having that we feel we need an app to track it. <laughs> I think they already. Thank you. I also think we already have an app that tracks sex. Isn't it called Tinder? <laughs> they don't know Tinder. Come on, guys. No, I'm not Tinder. Like bone here. It's my it's first day. My last day. No. Well, since that went so well, let's try something else. <laughs> the Reverend Billy Graham's son Franklin has pulled millions out of Wells Fargo and is calling for a boycott of the bank. All of this is because of this commercial. Take a look. Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, what kind of... I'm sorry. Can I... Can I... What kind of... What kind of... What kind of Christians... Yeah. ...are you? I'm sorry. People who want to take children into their homes... And you're saying no because you think that their lifestyle is well, how dare you? God
I didn't do that. Why are you? You know what, though? that was in the children's welfare system, mm -hmm. the forced to care system. Mm -hmm. We just want somebody to love us. Yeah. That's all. We don't care. When you're a child, you don't care if it's same sex, if it's traditional sex, it's whatever sex. It's a loving person, loving couple that want to take a child yeah. in and support. That's all that matters. And I have to tell you, Wells Fargo, congratulations. You got me on that yes. one. I support anyone mm -hmm. adopting any kid, not mm -hmm. just kids in foster. Any, any kid any, that's any, not an any infant, adoption. a kid that is a, it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. It's a huge but thing. this country was founded on religious liberty, and a faith group has the right, they have the right. to put their money wherever they, they want. They and right. Right. But don't fall for a boy crowd. It's kind of crap. Let me finish. Sorry, we are having an election where religious liberty is very much on the ba on the ballot. I mean, there are there are efforts to say that religious groups can't do what they want. Religious groups feel under attack, and they we may not like it. I don't like it, but I believe with all my heart that they have a right, if this is against their morals, to do whatever they damn well please with and their I, money. I agree with you. You, I can't agree. Defend, you can't say that they can't do that and then defend another. No, no, I don't out. say that they can do it. I say you should be ashamed you of yourself. Ashamed. You should be ashamed of yourself. And they call them and 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 just, by the just way. to say, one of the things that really irritates me about religious items is I am very open to the fact that this is how you feel. The place I get an attitude is when you tell me how to feel. So when you're telling people to take money out of that bank that is supporting not only getting children at an age when most people do not want to get children, to get children who have different abilities. That, you know, what you, what you do with this, that is not Christian. Well, I understand that you I, don't want to keep your money. Don't do it, but don't tell everybody else to take this stuff. That is they, just not cool. Yes. I just think that... I think that we're moving into a point where, where what is the mainstream is acceptance of and welcoming of same-sex families. And I, 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 that's where I stand. But I also am very wary of a culture that's nasty to people who want to protect their faith. These people don't, it, it is not consistent with their religious beliefs. They have the right to put their money where it is. They're also Christians. They're people who are supposed to be forgiving, yeah. understanding. Let's not forget where Christianity started and they were persecuted by taken like, like and when, they forgot but everybody, that they were prosecuted. I don't think, I think we're that. arguing two separate things, and I think when Chick-fil-A decided they weren't going to hire gay people, everyone thought that was abhorrent and disgusting. However, well, it's the gay... That, no, 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 Chick-fil-A never said that. Chick-fil-A didn't say they weren't going to hire gay people. What, they, what the gentleman who owns Chick-fil-A said okay. was that he did not believe in same-sex marriage. He Personally. spoke for but then it's himself. But it's still yes. gay people's rights not to buy that chicken. Absolutely. It's so, it's such a chicken. It's so good, it's so hard. Yeah. But you can't, you have to yeah. be... You got, this is a debate right that's going to go on, because, you know, it's one of the those things we all have the right to do it but to, you know be cognizant of what you're putting a, uh, the kibosh on I think that's what we're really saying but you know we're gonna go because we don't want to put any more kibosh on the fabulous Sam Waterston who's gonna be joining us so eight months Oscar-nominated role in 1984, The Killing Field. Sam Waterston has always been one of the best of the best in the business. Now he's teaming up with Jesse Tyler Ferguson in the public theater's free Shakespeare in the Park production of The Tempest. Please welcome the amazing and fabulous Sam Waterston. <laughs> and stuff for that. Anyway, um, how long did it take you to grow? I've been growing this ever since I knew I was going to do this, which is like last Thanksgiving. Really? So yeah. your hair grows kind of slow? Well, my beard grows kind of okay. slow. My but your hair, hair just... Not bad. I grew my hair too, but they decided that was... That wasn't right. Kind of too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I touch your, your hair. Can I touch your beard? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is Prospero as you would think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is so. This is your 13th Shakespearean role at the public in the last 50 years. Your very first was As You Like It. Yeah. So. You love Shakespeare. Do you, is it that you love Shakespeare or is it you love Shakespeare in the park? Why do you keep doing it? Well, both. I, well, I love Shakespeare. Right. I loved Shakespeare before I knew there was a park. Right. Um, but uh, Shakespeare in the park is... Who's, who has not been to see a Shakespeare play in the park here in this room? Oh, oh, get on your bike. You have you got to go. It, you know, got, it is yeah. absolutely, uh, there is no experience like it. It, it is absolutely flat out the best audience uh, in and, New York, yeah. maybe in the world. Yeah, and free. Everybody, free. you can free. It's absolutely free. Yeah. Um, all, and, and so, in order to get in, people line up to get in. Right. And yeah. And so they are leaning into the experience. They're hoping against hope that they didn't waste their day. And the enthusiasm goes right up onto the stage and the, yeah. and the actors theater. respond. Right. It's yeah. just... But you were, actors, I were, I'm sorry, your actors were genius in your play. I saw it and the light and the way the sun went down right at the right moment. Yeah, and the, the moon the comes moon, up. It's and beautiful. The, the, the cityscape is behind you and you're in the middle of nature. I mean, it's just... It's beautiful. I have a question. It's, there's nothing like You've it. done a lot of your performances uh, at the De La Court in Manhattan. Yeah. And I heard that, I think in the 70s, you had the best compliment of your life. After oh, one of yeah. these shows, what was? Yeah, this is starting to become a story in okay. itself. Um, I've told this a few times, so it's not a private story anymore. But I, I was playing Hamlet. I left the theater late. Uh, there's a gate that sort of serves a, gate one serves as the stage door, and I was coming out. And in those days. The park was a really scary place. Scary place. You remember how? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> so I'm walking out, and standing in the shadows is a huge guy. Huge. Huge. Huge man. <laughs> and he was in the darkness, so I couldn't tell uh, whether he was friendly or hostile. And uh, and I thought, well, you've just got to be brave and walk straight ahead. And so I started to go, and he said. Did you play Hamlet? And I thought, my life could depend on the answer. No? But, um, but, but uh, yeah, did you, first, did you like it is what I should have said. But I said Which show did you say? <laughs> but I said, no, I did. And he said, man, that was right off the street. Wow. Which is an expression I had never heard before right. and I don't right. think I've ever heard since. Yeah. But it's the best compliment yeah. I ever yeah. got. I, I have to be honest with you, I learned about how amazing you were on Law & Order. I was such a fan and still am. That, that show ran for 20 seasons and you were part of 16 of those seasons. I cried when you left. I will say I, will, I did cry because that's something I watched. But I heard there's a rumor that the show might be coming back, and will you be coming back with it? I've heard that rumor, too, and, if, and, and I, I, I have reason to hope that they're really going to get it done. Dick Wolf has been trying to yeah. do this mm -hmm. ever since it went off the air. Yeah. He never, never thought it should have ever gone off. No, it never should have been. Yeah. 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 Do people call you by your name on the street? Do, uh -huh. do they call you by your character name or your name on the street when you walk on the street? They call me by the name of the show. Yeah. Hey, Law and Order. <laughs> including me. She proves you can lose weight and still eat delicious food. And she's here with her latest recipes from the Hungry Girl Diet Cookbook. Please welcome Lisa Lillian. Hello. Hi. canned pumpkin and baked goods for 10 years because it is the single most brilliant thing. It makes me eat cake and feel healthy at the same time, exactly. which makes you not just a nutritionist, but a magician. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very hungry, and I know what women want, and I know that I am like a mad scientist in the kitchen, and I find ways to have people eat what they want and still fit into their pants. That's and I think, and I think you, you start where we all have to start, which is the pantry. You tell us what to buy. So, and you're going to take us through some meals, but tell us about some of your magic ingredients that make 
make this possible? Well, it's all about food swapping. Right. I, I know we're always told portion control, portion control, but let's be honest. Eat portion We control. want big servings. Yes. So all right. the ingredients yes. that I find allow us to eat major portions, which I think probably deserves a round of applause. Yes. <laughs> Okay, here, and this is from my brand new book, The Hungry Girl Diet Cookbook. These are breakfasts that are made with protein powder. Wow. So these are apple strudel crepes. I like to oh find God. ingredients that can, you can use in interesting ways. Okay. So again, very that crepe is made from two ingredients on the outside. It's egg whites and protein powder. So there's oh 28 God. grams of protein. Egg, egg white and protein powder. I don't like eggs. I didn't. This is growing oatmeal, so in right. addition to putting Yummy. stuff in it, what I do with this is I take the regular serving size of oats, which is a half cup, and use twice as much liquid, then cook it for twice as long, and let it sit, and it magically expands. That, right? So you get a huge serving oh size of oatmeal. So this, this is the same amount of oatmeal, this is the way you cook it, and this is the way you yes. normally cook it. Yes, and you could barely fit it in that dish. It was overflowing. I was like, get See, it I would, in there. I, would, I had four kids. I would totally have grabbed for the bigger, fuller one. Yeah, so you, I, you know what? I like the bigger, fuller. We more. More, more. Oh. Okay, and what's this? You replace that sort of fattening pizza dough with a yes, with a, with a um, portobello, portobello mushroom. mushroom. So, like, what I love that? pizza. Everyone loves pizza, but instead of a big carby crust, okay. you can use a portobello mushroom. Wow, wow. Raven okay. likes it. You like it? <laughs> There's turkey pepperoni on it. It tastes exactly like pizza. It's a hundred calories for that whole it? thing. Okay, if you're eating a pizza, there's yeah, like three or four times yeah. that amount. That's, so. a cheap, that's amazing. I love that. It's, it's, a, it's a really okay, good Okay, now cheese. mac and cheese. I didn't think there was any way to do mac and cheese in a diet friendly way. What did you do here? This is mac and chicken and cheese, and the way I yeah. broke that up that's is... Some? First, no. I use whole wheat pasta, we still chew in the pizza, okay. and then I bulk it up with cauliflower and some yellow bell peppers. Mm. I feel like I, can, I like, can give this to my son. Oh, that makes really good. Kids love this. It's so easy, fast, made in a skillet. I'm going to get to the chop. This, this is what I've been thing. doing forever. Right. So this only has three ingredients. It's a 94-calorie brownie, three things, cake mix, canned pumpkin. pure pumpkin, delicious, and chocolate right? chips. And it now, this is delicious. Good. My husband doesn't notice the pumpkin. Not at all. And instead of eggs or oil or butter, you just replace Place that with the pumpkin and your really love this. And what do we have here? This is one of the MVPs in my pantry these days. Powdered peanut butter. Have what? you seen this? Mm -hmm. No. This is made from yes. This, you should stand up for the powdered peanut butter. This stuff is and incredible. it turns out like this. Creamy? It turns, you can, How do you do you it? You can turn it into a spread. You just add water. It has a fraction of the calories and fat. So and it has about 45 or 50 calories. Mix you add a little water. That's mixed with Greek yogurt. But you can use oh it in God. smoothies. It's this delicious. is a PB and J caramel crunch cake. This so this, is, this should be your new best friend. Oh my God, you're my new best friend. Please come back. <laughs> our thanks to Lisa Lilly and members of our audience are going home with a copy of her brand new book. I have all the other. your questions on Facebook on our Facebook page this afternoon so start asking now at facebook.com the view slash the view sorry I didn't see that uh, we want to say thank you because without you guys you know it's just not fun to do and we want to also say have a great day and take a little time to enjoy whatever view you happen to see C27 News, honored by the Associated Press with the prestigious Joe Snyder Award for outstanding news service, plus the most awarded.